This video is proudly sponsored by New Type. Tools, accessories, model kits, these guys have it. Hop over to NewTypesHQ.com and use promo code UTAKABUTTER for 10% off on your next purchase. Hey, what's going on my dudes and dudettes, and welcome back to another exciting build from the good folks from Bandai Japan. So why don't we get started with the 144 scale Star Wars Millennium Falcon from the feature length film Solo, A Star Wars Story. And without further ado, let's get to it. Hello and welcome back my dudes and dudettes to another unique build from the go folks from Bendai. And if this is your first time to this YouTube channel, welcome. So as of December 18th will be officially my fourth year creating YouTube content. But most importantly, it is marking the third year of creating probably by far the most difficult model kit that I ever made for this channel. Now to reflect for those who are new to this channel, the first kits that I really started to delve in were somewhere between Gundam and Star Wars. But the one Star Wars kit that I really wanted to tackle besides the X-Wing fighter was the Millennium Falcon and within that same year Bendai was like hey we're gonna drop the biggest and probably the most complex perfect grade that we have ever built and thus I have built the perfect great Millennium Falcon now this kit still holds up beautifully today and I've had it in my office looking stellar as always but it's still a reminder on where I started and where I'm at now you know upgrading video equipment getting better mics um, perfecting my technique on how I paint these model kits and once again putting primer onto this guy before actually painting it straight up as is you know following the basics I really enjoyed making this model kit and it was really really by far the hardest model kit that I ever built in my life but something really irked on me why haven't I built the new version Millennium Falcon that came out almost four years ago and thus my dudes and dads we are going to be tackling the Millennium Falcon from the feature length film Solo a Star Wars story now I have built the Rebel model kit a little bit over two years ago and it was good but the one thing that that little kit was really lacking was really intense amount of detail and as you can clearly see here on the first side of the box art you get the front top and bottom part of the Millennium Falcon while it's a nice little screenshot of the scene where the Falcon is escaping the Kessel Run while all the same time giving you some really cool features. For starters, the Millennium Falcon actually has a detachable section in the very front part of the ship, which is the escape pod. First time ever been done in the Star Wars universe. Followed by a removable hatch so that way you can see the main characters, Chewbacca, Han Solo, and the ever so handsome Lando Calrissian. While at the same time give you a nice little bonus feature to remove another hatch in the middle section of the ship that showed the lounging area. It's kind of dark when it's fully completed and it's kind of a waste of time to do some custom painting, but if you have like one or two LED lights to really illuminate that area, it makes things really nice. So, what's inside the box? <laughs> oh man, I, I miss this model kit. So, as always, you are happily greeted with the instruction manual, which I have to say, it is a welcoming sight to see again after three years. With the first page giving a complete rundown of runners that you're going to be expecting from this model kit, everything ranged from dark, light, to transparent parts, this is the complete chart for you. While at the same time giving you a small glimpse on two action bases, one for the escape pod and one for the Millennium Falcon. While at the same time giving you some small little hints of little areas that you can put some custom LED lights in there if you choose to do so so at the same time adding more custom flair to what this Millennium Falcon really looks like. But probably the downside with this model kit, it doesn't contain any of the landing gear, so you're going to actually have to rock up without it, which is fine because when I built the Rebel model kit a couple years back, I was a little disappointed that the model kit didn't come with its own action base, so it's kind of a nice little trade-off. As for the second to final last page, it gives you a complete rundown on how the model kit looks like when you attach the escape pod, and at the same time put everything together while at the same time informing you that the top hatch in the very top of the model kit is removable. It is kind of tricky to get loose when it's full painted but it's not that hard while wrapping these up in the very back you get a monstrous chart on applying the sticker decals and water slide decals you did not hear me correctly you get two choices between water and sticker decals which is great and it's actually been done before on the perfect gray but this time around it's actually being implemented on the 144 scale which is awesome and the very bottom you get a nice color chart to add some custom flair if you want to do something really cool and that pretty much wraps everything up what do you expect inside the manual so what can we truly expect inside the first runners right off the bat you get the front and top side of the Millennium Falcon while at the same time giving you a small glimpse of two effect parts that you could put on the weapons on the top and bottom of the Falcon which is nice and at the very least you get nice engraving area where you can actually house the LED light unit when you purchase it separately from Bendai which is great followed by more runners showing the engine compartment the satellite dish more glimpse of what the escape pod looks like and there is so much 
fine little detail in there. It's just crazy what they were able to implement on this guy. It's on par to what you expect from a perfect Great Falcon, which I'm kind of shocked that they were able to put in something this small. Once again, you get two action bases, which is great. More parts, but definitely probably far the nicest thing I like about this kit. Once again, it's the insane amount of detail that's actually implemented onto these runners. I mean, they didn't need to go this far, but it's very impressive. You get a nice effect part on the very pack for the engine area, which is great. And then at the same time, a little emphasis on detail for the main compartment. And once again, you get not one, but two options to apply decals or sticker decals, which is also great. But I would really recommend you stick with the water slide decals because it'll give you amazing effects. As always, before I get started, I need to evaluate which area I'm going to tackle first. And right off the bat, I'm going to be tackling the main lounge area because this is actually going to be the hardest part of this kit. Since every piece in there is actually one whole mode, I'm actually going to have to go in here and paint each individual piece separately with a fine tip brush. But by far, the challenging part is going to be floor. I'm going to have to actually put some kind of like um, gloss coat area to make that thing really shiny like how you see in the film. And definitely by far, the most challenging part is going to be the little figurines in the cockpit. I've done it before. It's very simple and very straightforward, but by far, is going to be the funnest part of this model kit but definitely the challenging part is actually painting each individual areas you know a good example the back part of the cockpit area i want to make sure the two back lights illuminate when a light refracts onto it but i've done that in the past it didn't look really good so i'm actually have to stick two mega led lights to really pop that area out i'm not going to bother with the actual decals to apply into the cockpit maybe one or two areas but i'm pretty much going to be focusing everything on hand painting so as you can tell it is a massive challenge to do something this small but it is a lot of fun. Honey, honey, I got what you want. Give me all your love, it's burning hot. It's what you do to me, babe, I can guarantee. Honey, honey, I got what you need. I want your eyes so long 
Now, this next part is clearly optional. You don't necessarily have to do this, but for me, I like to take it to the next level. When I did notice in the film, there are these weird looking red lights, count a total of eight of them at the very bottom part of the Millennium Falcon. There are little hints of mold little dots that indicate where those lights are, but I wanna make them pop out a little bit more with some Pico LED lights. So I'm gonna drill some holes in there and then install those little dudes the way how they are in the film.
right, my dudes, and do that. As this video is wrapping up, I want to share with you guys my thoughts and impressions about this model kit. But by far, I really want to reflect why I love Star Wars when I did as a kid. I mean, I remember watching the films front to back on the old school VHS tapes, and then as soon as I got good at drawing, I then started to put all my love and intention on learning how to draw the X-Wing fighters, the Y-Wings, the TIE fighters, the Super Star Destroyers, you name it. But probably by far the most attractive ship that I loved drawing a lot was actually the Millennium Falcon. And I remember back when I was in college, I actually ran into the artist who did the actual uh, design of the Millennium Falcon, which I believe was Roger Christensen. Hopefully I got that right. And the guy's work was just beautiful, just nice. 80s retro like futuristic look i just loved it and i, I kind of liked it, his old school design with of the falcon back in the day versus the hunk of junk that we all know and love and the actual beautiful part about this falcon it actually plays a lot of homage to his original concept work which i love and i can't say anything negative about it it's cool it's a nice contrast building this kit versus the rebel the Rebel kit was great, I'm not knocking it, but I felt that I didn't do quite enough justice when I made that build a couple years back. I mean, sure, it was a straight up build. I applied to me a panel lining black to really emphasize those areas that have a nice little detail, did some light weathering, and that was it. But I felt that the Rebel kit was just lacking that extra oomph of detail, and Bandai delivered. You know, sure they had the assets from the actual film to take from references and then build the kit as is, but man, the amount of detail on this kit is incredible. It's on par with the perfect grade. I'm just, I am just shocked how much loving care went into this kit. And I just had so much fun taking my time building this kit in the last five to six days, and it was worth it, man. Eh. It's, uh, I think a lot of the reasons why I started to build this kit again is because Star Wars is at the point where it's at this um, redemption arc. You know, the Mandalorian's out. It's the hot new thing. It, it's definitely paying respect to the source material and then adding something new to it, which I'm very happy to see. And then with that invigoration and excitement, I'm actually really hyped to get back to building Star Wars kits. So. To be back into something that I loved to do when I was a kid, and now I'm doing it as an adult, as a profession, it's the best thing in the world. And it makes me even more happy that I can share it with you dudes. So, on hindsight, is this kid worth purchasing? So, you have the Rebel, and then you have this one. If you want to save some couple of bucks, get the Rebel. I think it's like under $25 to $30. I'm pretty sure you can still find it on Amazon. But if you want to take that skill to the next level, add a little custom flair painting, add some emphasis of detail in those dark little areas to make them really pop out, add some custom LED lights to this baby, ugh, you will not be disappointed and you will be happily welcome to trying something new and exciting because that's what happened when I built this kit. It excited me. It wanted me to take this build to something to the next level. I didn't want to do something simple. I wanted to do something that makes it like a, a collectible thing. Like you would see from a Model Master series or from a Hot Toys, you know. I wanted to take it to the next level and I felt that I achieved that finally. But I'm pretty sure there's a lot of you guys out there that won't let me down for not painting the Millennium Falcon perfectly the way how it was a couple years back and I get it. So, overall thoughts, this kit was great. It's a, it's a little pricey, but I feel that the price justifies the amount of detail that is actually implemented onto this kit, and you will not be disappointed. So now we gotta wait patiently until Bendai gets the rights to make the Razor Crest from the Mandalorian, and that's gonna be super welcoming the build. I'm gonna be happy to try some new weathering techniques onto that, like I did the Millennium Falcon a couple years back, and I don't know. I don't know there'll be more Star Wars content. But I would love to build these kits from time to time, and I hope I can share these with you dudes and do that. And with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Thank you guys so much for the likes, comments, and the subscribes. And thank you so much for the Patreons. Thank you so much for you guys continuing to support. I can't tell you how thankful I am to share what I love with you. And I look forward to sharing more what I am passionate about next year. Thank you guys so, so damn much. And with that being said, please be safe, happy Thanksgiving, and I will see you dudes and do that on the next video.